This is Stephanie March, food editor of Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine and fellow foodies. It's the most wonderful time of the year, the Minnesota State Fair. And not only are foods on a stick, I'm bringing you a podcast on a stick. It's a show released daily during the run of the fair, covering the fair's best of the best, the must-eats, the new foods, the old favorites, plus events, hidden gems, and the shows you can't miss. We're going to cover it all. Just listen to Podcasts on a Stick. Find episodes on the Podcast One app or wherever you find your podcasts. TCL is a proud sponsor of the 1500 ESPN Studios. TCL, America's fastest growing TV brand. This is information not being reported by anyone else. You want the scoop? Here it is with Darren Doogie Wolfson. This first full week of September brings you Scoop Podcast episode 171. We thank sponsors Skull Marketing, Vivid Seats, and My Bookie. I'll tell you about all three as the podcast progresses. We will have our normal plethora of notes spanning the local sports teams, plus brief conversations with Gophers men's hockey coach Bob Motzko and Gophers women's assistant basketball coaches Kelly Thibault Dudanis and Kelly Roisland, plus one of our photographers at Channel 5 caught up with Gophers men's basketball coach Richard Patino the other day. So I will replay that conversation. But we will begin with the pride of Maple Grove. He just got released by the Vikings on Friday. He's been on the podcast before. We welcome back to the conversation, Jake Wenicky. Jake, always good to catch up. Thank you for doing this. From your decision, Jake, to sign here right after the draft to being let go on Friday, how would you how would you describe your overall Vikings experience? Uh, it's been amazing. It's been uh, such a blessing. I've had so much fun, and it's just so awesome to be such a part of such a great organization and I see my hometown team, a team that I've been a fan of my whole life, and then to see it. A part of it's been uh, pretty amazing. I mean, what was the thrill like? I mean, wearing that uniform, getting to play in preseason games, heck, scoring a touchdown in a Vikings <laughs> uniform. What was that like? I mean, it was a pretty pretty special feeling to get to run out to U.S. Bank Stadium and uh, just kind of be in front of my home, hometown fans and just friends, friends and family there and just hearing them yelling and just seeing them after the game. I mean, it was such, such an amazing feeling and so fun and just I was so blessed to have been a part of it. How tough was Friday? It was it was pretty tough. Um, I was pretty pretty emotional and um, it was tough to hear. But um, I'm I'm doing pretty good now. I'm pretty excited just kind of just to see see where the Lord takes me and to see uh, kind of where I have an opportunity now. And I'm and I'll be ready wherever that may be. Obviously, I'd love to to have it in Minnesota. That'd be the the best thing ever to get another chance. But I mean anywhere. Anywhere I go, um, I'll be ready, and, and I'm excited. How agonizing was that wait? I mean, you guys get back late Thursday from Nashville. You're sitting by your phone, then unfortunately the phone rings at some point on Friday. What was that wait like? Yeah, it's kind of just try to go, try to go about my day, uh, but kind of also keep my phone. I get my phone on vibrate. I have my phone on loud. Um, so kind of just uh, staying, staying close to that and just kind of, Knowing that it, that it might happen, it's a little, a little nerve wracking, but um, yeah, it's it 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 a tough day, I guess. Take us through the meeting. I mean, was it was a general manager Rick Spielman who first called you and said, "Hey, Jake, can you come over to the facility?" Then do you go in to Coach Zimmer's office? Is it Coach Zimmer and Rick Spielman? Are there other people in the room? Just take us through that that final meeting. So there's a couple of different people. Uh, Spielman was actually Spielman was actually. Um, busy during it, so I went with uh, one of the assistant GMs and kind of just met with him, um, and he kind of just, just kind of broke it down to me, just meeting him one-on-one. It was just it was pretty awesome. He was very uh, respectful and just really appreciated everything I did and was vocal about that, and I mean, I just have so much respect for, for him and the whole organization and how they handled everything. Did you also have a chance to converse with Coach Zimmer? Um, no, but I, but I did get to talk to uh, Coach Hazel, my receiver coach, and mm-hmm. then a bunch of other coaches that I got to see on the on the way out. Um, I got to get to talk to them and thank them and um, just tell them how much I appreciated them. What was their overall message to you? What did they leave you with? I mean, from Coach Hazel to I presume that that you met with with George Payton, the assistant general manager. When you say you met with assistant general manager, I mean, so from yeah. George to so, Coach Hazel, what was their message? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't actually George. He was also busy, so I met with another one. Um, okay. 
think it was Ryan. I forget his last name. But, oh, okay, uh, Ryan Munnins, yeah. Okay, but yeah, it was, um, they were awesome. I mean, they just told me, like, they appreciate everything I did, um, appreciate how hard I worked, and um, kind of just keep on, keep on working, keep your head up. Jake, how much better of a player are you today compared to the day that you signed with the Vikings? Oh, so much better. I learned, I learned so much um, just about life even. I mean, just about how to, how to work hard. So many things I took from Coach Zimmer and then Coach Hayes and all the coaches just kind of how to, how to prepare, how to pay attention to detail. And so many different things um, that I learned. And obviously as a football player, I learned so much, um, so much from my position coach, just kind of just how to do certain techniques and, uh, I learned from the vets as well. I mean, it's it a pretty, pretty amazing team and pretty uh, awesome to be a part of and just to feel the support and the love and how they wanted me to be great and they want everybody that's there to be great. Expound on the on the mental growth part from preparation to studying to everything that entails, you know, the mental side of, of being a professional athlete. How much did you grow on that side? Um, I think I just grew so much as kind of just knowing like how to, how to watch film, how to uh, how to study your playbook, how to break down a defender, how to understand, how to get open. I mean, there's just so many different uh, tools and, and keys that I learned from my position coach and also the, the vets. I mean, they're in there constantly uh, teaching me and helping me grow each practice, each film session outside of it. I mean, they're just doing so much uh, to help me learn as much as I can. I mean, just kind of go every day and kind of be an information gatherer uh, and learn in every way that you can. What is next, Jake? I mean, do you stay here in the Twin Cities, just train, and wait for the phone to ring? Yeah, uh, just, just staying, staying at home and just working out. And just uh, my agent's kind of working on some, some teams, trying to get a, a workout or something. Um, and and kind of see see what happens, and, uh, and I'll be ready when it happens. And are you open-minded? I mean, you know, the NFL can still be there in a year or two, but if, if a team from Canada calls or there's that new league with – with Brad Childress and Michael Vick and some other NFL luminaries that what kicks off in, I think, January or February? I mean, are you open-minded to just playing anywhere at this point? Um, I think right now, I mean, I want to play in the NFL. I think that's, I feel like, I believe I can play in the NFL, and I mean, that's, that's my goal. Um, but I guess I kind of think about that later on. I mean, right now, I'm really hopeful for an opportunity in the NFL, I guess. Um, and I guess I'll see what happens with that uh, later on. Jake, you should have a read on the Vikings as as well as anyone. I mean, do you feel like the team that you just left has a chance to have a really special season? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a special team, a special group. Uh, they're, they're a very, very close group, great people, great organization. Like, ripping all the way through the organization, to the players, coaches, front office, everybody. Um, and then they have so much talent, and they work so hard every day. So, I mean, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited to see what they can do, and uh, I'd love to be part of it. You said that, that so many people helped you, but specifically Adam Thiel and Stefan Diggs. What was it like working with those guys on a day-in and day-out basis? I mean, it was amazing. I mean, to get to, first of all, to see their example, and just kind of the way that they approach each day, the way that they work, the way that they prepare, um, it's awesome. I learned so much just from watching them. And then obviously when we're watching film and doing everything, they're constantly telling, hey, try this, hey, do this. Like, if you do this next time, uh, you'll be more open. Uh, there's just so many different things. And they're both are such great people. They're just, I mean, that's, that's, that's the coolest thing. Like, you come into a room like that, and the superstars there are, are amazing people and, and two of the hardest workers on the team. So, I mean, it's just so, so awesome to uh, grow and, and learn with them and, and from them. How happy are you, Jake, that Brandon Zilstra, fellow Minnesota native, made the 53-man roster? Man, I'm, I'm so proud of him. That was, that was so cool to, to hear that and just kind of just seeing everything he went through, some, some adversity with some injuries, and then to – have an awesome game and a, and a touchdown in the last preseason game. I'm just I'm so proud of him and so happy for him. Um, and he's from Minnesota, so that just makes it all better. He's just a great guy, a great friend of mine. So I'm I'm so happy for him. Let's go after this, Jake. What was it like not preparing for a college game for the first time in in many years? And <laughs> heck, your college ended up having a game. What I guess there was lightning in the in the Ames, Iowa vicinity. So, I mean, your alma mater was supposed to play a game over the weekend at Iowa I State, won. and the game gets rained out. It was crazy, yeah. I was, I was tuned in to watch it. I actually paid six ninety five um, <laughs> to watch it on my computer. And um, you said, like, five plays into the game, it gets postponed. I sat there watching the weather radar to see if it was going to uh, clear over, and it ended up canceling it. So that was, <laughs> that was tough to see. Uh, but, I'm, but I'm excited for them. They're going to have a great season. Did you get your money back at least? 
No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Jake, we'll certainly stay in touch, and I speak for many that, that there's many people rooting for you, and we'll certainly keep track of, of where you end up because it's inevitable that you're going to end up somewhere in the near future. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it, Dan. From Maple Grove High School, Jake Winnicky on his experience with the Vikings, and we know that the practice squad changes a lot. So he'll be waiting by his phone, whether it's the Vikings or someone else. He certainly showed enough in preseason games, scoring the touchdown, the two-point conversion, proving that he can play on special teams. So whether it's the Vikings or maybe somebody else at some point this year, you heard Jake say that his desire right now is to play in the NFL. So hopefully some team comes calling in the very near future. Skull Marketing helps keep the podcast going. Skull Marketing is a business-to-business marketing agency. They specialize in working with local small businesses. Online, skullmarketing.com. Phone number, 612-787-SKULL. You can call now if you're a business owner, in particular a small business owner. If you're a business owner, if you're looking for some help, some marketing help, call them. Get a free 30-minute consultation. There's nothing to lose. Let them sell themselves to you. Then you can make a determination. Hey, we're in. Hey, maybe we're not in. But these guys know what they're doing. Skull Marketing was started by two former Google employees to help the little guys compete. They work with businesses in web development, pay-per-click advertising, social media management, and so many more areas. Let's make Google work for you. For more information, it is skullmarketing.com or 612-787-SKULL. Vikings notes and no particular order they are having a reunion for the 1998 team think about how special that team was randy moss 15 and 1 making plans to go to miami for the super bowl double digit favorites in the nfc championship game obviously the disappointment of losing to the falcons in the nfc championship game at the metrodome but so many special moments from that regular season i know brian billick will be back in town he is speaking at a gathering on Saturday night, and last I heard, over 30 members of the team will be in town for that reunion this weekend. The 20-year reunion of the Vikings' 1998 NFC Central Division champion team. Then many of the same folks will be back in town the weekend of September 22nd, Sunday, September 23rd. Vikings Bills at U.S. Bank Stadium. The late Denny Green, the head coach of the 1998 Vikings, will be inducted into the Vikings Ring of Honor. Mike Zimmer was pretty short on Monday afternoon about his decision to move on from punter Ryan Quigley. He said he wasn't good enough in the preseason. So former Steeler Matt Weil is the new punter. The Vikings picking him up off the waiver wire. They were the only team to put a claim in on Weil over the weekend. There was really no additional trade that came close. Additional, by that I mean the Vikings giving up that seventh round pick next year. For Brett Jones from the Giants, what, a week or so ago, the Vikings did not come close to making another trade. I did hear that Baltimore had interest in Marcus Sherrills, but whether it was Sherrills or Mackenzie Alexander, in fact, the Vikings took inventory of a handful of their guys, but my understanding is the Vikings did not come close, particularly close, to making another trade over the weekend. On Chad Beebe, the Vikings are very happy that he cleared waivers, They eventually, I'm told, see him on the 53-man roster. He gives them something they really don't have, a quick, sure-handed slot receiver that can help on special teams. Zimmer was mum on Monday on who his starting center will be on Sunday against the 49ers. He did note that Danny Isadora looked good last week practicing at that position, and he got some more reps at that position on Monday in practice. I will say that I do see Jones eventually playing. Pat Elfline is now off the pup, so Elfline is back. In the next few weeks, I do eventually see Jones, the guy they picked up in that trade with the Giants, whether it's at left guard, we saw him last Thursday in Tennessee playing left guard, or center, maybe as soon as this Sunday. But definitely make note of Brett Jones. He is going to play for the Vikings this year. We talked with defensive end Everson Griffin on Monday. By the way, he says his leg is 100%. He is ready to go on Sunday after missing a couple weeks with an infection in his leg after cutting his leg. Anyway, he said he knows that there are some tweaks coming to the defense, doesn't want to tell us reporters what those tweaks will be. I will say it's pretty obvious that we will see some calls, some defensive calls that involve three safeties on the field. I mean, George Iloka, 
signed here because he is going to play, but the Vikings still have a healthy opinion of what Andrew Sandejo can do this year, even if Sandejo is a good bet to not be here next year. The Vikings still feel like he can give them a lot this year. So you will see different defensive formations with three safeties on the field, whether it's Iloka lining up as a hybrid linebacker or Harrison Smith, but definitely look for that as soon as this Sunday. On Brian Robison, Everson Griffin told us, he sees B-Rob still playing. From my naked eye, I thought B-Rob had a good training camp and a good preseason. My sense is the decision to let him go was not universal at the Twin Cities Athletic Performance Center. It definitely was not an easy decision. There were split opinions on what to do with B-Rob. By the way, B-Rob is not open to doing any interviews right now. I have texted with him. He's still trying to figure out if he wants to continue to play. But again, Griffin going on the record saying he expects B-Rob to continue playing, entering here his 12th season in the NFL. Of course, his first 11 spent with the Vikings. The Vikings never considered Dan Bailey. That after Daniel Carlson had a good game on Thursday. Mike Boone was $8,000 well spent. The Vikings invested only $8,000 in Mike Boone to sign him as an undrafted free agent. Out of the University of Cincinnati, he makes the team, even though Rock Thomas also made the team. Boone is the number three running back. The Denver Broncos also tried to sign Boone, but they drafted a running back. Boone's agency looked at the situation and said, hey, Jarek McKinnon is gone. The Vikings did not draft a running back. Hey, it doesn't matter about the money now. Where can we go to position Mike to make the roster? Well, good job by his agency to position Mike here in Minnesota, and he won a roster spot. I got a couple Twitter questions asking if Stacy Coley was ever in jeopardy of losing his job, not making the team. The answer is no. The Vikings have a very healthy opinion of Stacy Coley and his potential moving forward. So I can just tell you, Stacy Coley was not a tough decision for them to keep. He was always going to be on the Vikings 53-man roster. It was Scott Studwell in the front office who took in, among others from the Vikings, the Gophers' New Mexico State game last Thursday at TCF Bank Stadium. Among colleges, the Vikings college scouts have hit in the last couple weeks. There's two, Boston College and Division II Grand Valley State. No stone goes unturned. We'll get to Wolves notes in just a second. Let me tell you about Vivid Seats. Vivid Seats is an online event ticket marketplace dedicated to providing fans of live entertainment with experiences that last a lifetime. The NFL is back, and that means the return of Vikings football, Vikings Niners, U.S. Bank Stadium this Sunday. Vikings Bills in just a few Sundays. This is your chance to get to U.S. Bank Stadium. I'm guessing a lot of you haven't been to U.S. Bank Stadium for any event, let alone a Vikings game. We know that this Vikings season has a chance to be pretty special. Maybe not as special in the regular season as last year, but with the roster they have, double-digit victories. Seems like a fairly decent bet. Maybe it's just 10, maybe it's not 11 or 12, but this looks like it should be a very special Vikings season. So why not go to Vivid Seats, vividseats.com, or download the app and take advantage of an opportunity to buy Viking seats. You don't have to worry about buying them from a scalper on the street, you know, from Craigslist where you don't even know who you're buying the tickets from. This is a legitimate website. They've been in the business for a while. The reviews online are fantastic. So think about utilizing Vivid Seats to take advantage of getting to a Vikings game this season. Online, again, it is vividseats.com. It's the two megastars summer mashup. The awesome iPhone on the Rockstar Metro PCS Network. Get the iPhone you've always wanted for $0 so you can jam without limits. It's a hit. Get an iPhone SE on us when you switch. Metro PCS. Coverage not available in some areas, plus sales tax and $10 activation fee. Requires port of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or on Metro PCS in past 90 days to an unlimited LTE plan. See store for details and terms and conditions. All right, on the Wolves, where to begin? I guess we can begin with Lou Aldang now officially on the free agent market. The Wolves are playing coy on whether there is legitimate interest in Dang, but they are doing their homework. I'm not quite sure they even have to do that much homework. Of course, Tom Thibodeau has the book on Luau Dang. The Wolves are interested in Dang. I think the better question to ask is, with multiple teams interested in Luau Dang, would he choose here over elsewhere? I'll also remind you 
that a couple years ago the Wolves offered Lou Aldang a three-year, $36 million deal. Year three was only partially guaranteed. The guaranteed money was $30 million. He said no. He got four years, $72 million from the Lakers. So turning down the Wolves a couple summers ago, choosing the Lakers worked out very well for Lou Aldang financially and he will have multiple teams in on him the next couple weeks but definitely the wolves have interest in luau dang longtime columnist charlie walters of the pioneer press led his don't print that portion of his sunday column with this there's more to the jimmy butler carl anthony towns relationship than most people know and it's not encouraging for the timberwolves now what he's alluding to i'm not entirely sure but here's my read of the situation checking again in recent time first off i should make note of i still firmly believe and have been led to believe that carl anthony towns eventually will sign his contract extension the deadline isn't until the end of october my read is that jimmy and cat simply don't get along hopefully an adult conversation can patch that up jimmy doesn't necessarily like cat's attitude and the fact that tibbs is not neutral in this dispute would make it seem that cat would have some uneasiness about the situation and i can't fault tibbs for picking a side jimmy is his guy so tibbs is going to lean toward his guy but there's a sense talking to some people that know cat that cat almost feels like he's being ganged up on that it's two against one. I still, though, believe that if you put all three in the same room and lay everything on the table, have adult conversations, I'm telling you, have adult conversations, that they can work through at least some of the issues. Maybe not all. Action speaks louder than words. We'll have to see how the season plays out, particularly early in the season. But I still think the three of them need to gather in the same room and have adult conversations. But it's a matter of Jimmy needing to learn to trust Cat more and trust that cat can have the attitude that I guess Jimmy is looking for, or at least has it maybe more often. And hopefully Jimmy then comes down from his ledge of being so uber competitive and realizing that cat maybe will never meet his level of intensity, but he's still one heck of a player. And yes, there are issues with maybe cat not giving it his all on defense, but I still think if they have conversations, adult conversations, they can work through at least some of their issues. And I'm telling you, bottom line, there's still an expectation that Carl Anthony Towns will sign a contract extension before the deadline of October 31st. I should add, whether it was Cat directly or his agent, that there have been conversations with owner Glenn Taylor where Cat has said, hey, I feel like that Tibbs isn't being neutral in this situation, that he is siding with Jimmy Butler and on Glenn. Remember, he wasn't at the final Lynx home game the send-off for Lindsey Whalen, I'm told it was minor. It was something that was uncomfortable. He would have been there if he could have been there. He thinks the world of the Lynx. He thinks the world of Lindsey Whalen. I can promise you, Glenn Taylor wanted to be there. So stop ripping Glenn for not being there. It's not like he was out of town on some random business trip. He wanted to be there, but he couldn't be there. But I'm told everything is okay now with owner Glenn Taylor. Also on the Wolves, many guys are back in town as of this week for informal workouts. That includes C.J. Williams. C.J. turned down an opportunity to play for Team USA again, Jeff Van Gundy and Team USA. Team USA has some World Cup qualifying games coming up in mid-September. They wanted C.J., but C.J. said, hey, thank you. It's an honor. It's a privilege to wear the red, white, and blue, but I need to get to know my new teammates. I want to be in Minnesota to work out with my new teammates and my new coaches. So C.J. Williams turns down USA Basketball. I've gotten good feedback on new Wolves assistant Malik Allen. Also, because I've said for months that I expected John Lucas III to actually fill that last assistant spot, the Rick Brunson spot, it will be Malik Allen. But John Lucas III will be taking on even more responsibilities this year. The Wolves think the world of his coaching future, specifically Tom Thibodeau. So John Lucas III may not have the title of assistant coach, but he will be heavily involved in game planning and player development. They will give him even more responsibility this upcoming year. If you want more on the Wolves, be sure to check out Scoop Podcast episode 170. Tom Thibodeau was a guest of mine for about nine or ten minutes. He talked about Jimmy Butler recovering from the offseason hand surgery, Jimmy Butler turning down, the four-year, $110 million extension. If he feels good about Cat eventually signing his extension, Derek Rose, C.J. Williams, James Nunnally, 
and so much more. That's Tom Thibodeau, Scoop Podcast Episode 170. All right, let's move on to the Twins, the Byron Buxton situation. Byron is actually coming back here to Minnesota this week to gather his stuff. Then he'll drive home, which is in the south. I can promise you this. Byron is not stopping by Target Field when he's in town this week. Make no mistake, it's a service time thing. Hey, I appreciate Thad Levine when he's on this podcast. We'll have Thad on again, I'm positive, in the very near future. But it's just laughable when he's citing... They want Byron to be healthy. Then why are you playing him at AAA? Now, he didn't play the last couple days because his thought was, hey, why should I play? If they want me to be healthy, I'll take myself out of the lineup. There's no point in me playing these final couple games. But Fed was citing, we want Byron to maintain his health with the wrist, yet he was playing the last 12 games or so at AAA. Really good numbers, a batting average over 340, a home run, nine extra base hits. Yeah, a few strikeouts, but wouldn't you want him to see Major League pitching in the month of September salvage something from this season? So some of the bullet points that Thad Levine laid out were just indefensible. Also, lack of playing time, yet you've got field in the outfield. You've got Cave, and yeah, Cave can be the fourth outfielder next year, but to suggest that if you brought up Byron Buxton, it was going to be hard to find him playing time, that is so laughable. But of course, the Twins can't cite service time. I just wonder if damaging the relationship with Byron, with his agent, the agent's agency that represents a number of players, Chris Sale, Corey Kluber, they have a lengthy client list. Is it worth pissing them off just to gain one additional year of team control. Also remember, the Twins tried to sign Byron to a long-term deal last winter. It was a six-year offer with two team options. They tried to steal him. They tried to rip him off on a long-term deal coming off the season he had last year, Platinum Gold Glove. Heck, last year, Byron Buxton got MVP votes as a 23-year-old. They tried to steal him on a long-term deal. Then he should have made more money this year, but his one-year deal was right at the minimum. They could have bumped him up just a little bit. They could have bumped him up to what the raises ended up being for Kepler and Rosario. They did not. Then they rushed him back at one point this year. It's just it's been a roller coaster of things with the Twins and Byron Buxton. So there's definitely some relationship mending that needs to take place between the Twins front office and Byron Buxton. It should be an interesting winter on that front. I think eventually, heck, I'm a believer that time heals Just about every wound, most wounds, if not all wounds. So I think eventually they can patch up that relationship. But that relationship is pretty sour right now. No guarantees on the future of Paul Molitor. Is he back? Is he not back? But I can tell you, at least on my front, the watch is on. That's what happens when you have a season that doesn't meet expectations. Molly still has a couple years to go on his contract. He makes $1.5 million a year. It's not like it's a sizable buyout. The third year is fully guaranteed. I've been asked that, hey, is the third year of Molly's three-year extension a team option? No, I'm told it is fully guaranteed. But if the Twins wanted to cut the cord on Molly, it's not like it's a huge chunk of change. So I'm just telling you, the watch is on. We've always wondered, Falvey and Levine, would they want to bring in their own guy? Then you have this season after having a great season last year, big expectations entering this year. And clearly the Twins have not met those expectations the september call-ups in addition to the buxton decision offer up some head scratchers jake reed and nick anderson yes admittedly biased nick was on this podcast a few weeks ago talking about his journey being out of baseball professional baseball completely a few years ago helping remodel houses here in the twin cities area then the fight back to get all the way back up to triple a and thinking he's on the doorstep, he would get a September call-up. International League All-Star, really good strikeout numbers at AAA. The Twins reward Andrew Vasquez with a promotion in large part because he is Rule 5 draft eligible this winter. Well, so is Anderson. So is Jake Reed. So the head scratchers are, why wouldn't you call up Anderson and Reed? Finding room on the 40-man roster isn't real difficult. They called up Petit with a 60-man move on Logan Morrison. They could still 60-day DL Irvin Santana to create another spot. Are you kidding me on Petit? I mean, you could have put Morrison and Santana on the 60-day DL and brought up both Reed and Anderson. Twins pro scout Wesley Wright was spied the other day at a Braves game. Scouting the Braves, he's based in that region anyway, but the Braves certainly have... Some pending free agents, make no mistake. The Twins have a number of pro scouts out this month. 
while watching big league teams preparing for free agency this winter. Also, Trevor May will be the opener on Tuesday in Houston. The Twins tried the opener with Gabrielle Moya over the weekend in Texas. It is a thing now with the Twins copying the Tampa Bay Rays, although their guy Josh Kolk, who used to work with the Rays, he's the brainchild behind the opening idea. So Trevor May, the Twins opener on Tuesday. All right, let's get to the local basketball scene. Let's start with Hopkins 2019 forward Zeke Naji. He just got back from unofficial visits to both UCLA and Arizona at UCLA. He ran into former Timberwolf Kevin Love. Here is the busy rest of September for Zeke Naji. On Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, both Kansas coach Bill Self and Kentucky coach John Calipari We'll have in-home visits. Technically, Kentucky has not offered Zeke, at least not yet. But with John coming to town, you have to wonder if an offer is coming in the very near future. Then on Monday the 10th, Patrick Ewing of Georgetown will be in town for an in-home visit with Zeke. And Baylor then is in on the 12th. Richard Pitino of the Gophers has an in-home visit with Zeke on the 13th. Sean Miller from Arizona in on the 17th. Purdue coach Matt Painter is in on the 24th. UCLA is in on the 26th. In between all that, he will unofficially visit Kansas, Kentucky, and Baylor. Then at the end of the month, early October, Zeke will cut down his list, then set up some official visits for the month of October, then make a commitment in November. I didn't mention Wisconsin anywhere along the way there, but the Badgers are still in the mix. As I've said for some time, it's an uphill climb if you're Richard Pitino and the Gophers certainly have not been eliminated. The Gophers have a shot, and I'm just saying it's an uphill battle to get Zeke Naji. Trey Holloman of Creighton Durham Hall, class of 2022. Congratulations to him. He was invited to USA Junior Minicamp, which is upcoming in Colorado Springs, Colorado. He is a name to remember. Class of 2022, Trey Holloman, Luke Anderson committed to Iowa State. He was supposed to visit the Gophers officially this weekend. So much for that. Austin Crowley was supposed to visit recently. Well, before he got here, he committed to Vanderbilt. So 2019 recruiting for Richard Pitino and the Gophers isn't going real well. Only fair to evaluate at the very end. There are still a number of good players available, but the swing and miss so many times already is definitely not encouraging. David Roddy of Breck will visit the Gophers. He's at least scheduled as of now. We'll see if that changes with all these other guys changing. But as of now, Roddy's scheduled to officially visit the Gophers the weekend of September 15th. Talking to somebody close to Roddy, it sounds like, speaking of uphill battle, it'll be an uphill battle. The Gophers have not been eliminated. They have a chance. Heck, you get him on campus, you show him that shiny new practice facility, the Gophers have a chance. But I'm just saying, it's an uphill battle to get David Roddy of Breck. Let's forget Gophers 2019 recruiting for just a second. This year's team certainly has a chance to be pretty good, middle of the pack in the Big Ten. Maybe higher. One of our photographers from Channel 5, Jeff Briashi, caught up with head coach Richard Patino briefly at the State Fair the other day. He started by asking about this year's recruiting class, Oturu, Kausher, and Jarvis Omersa of Orono. So here is Richard Patino. I think Gabe Kausher had a terrific summer. He, he's just very, very serious about the game. You don't get that with freshmen a lot. Uh, Jarvis Omerso was terrific as well. He never gets tired, which is exciting. He's a terrific athlete. So I think with both those guys, uh, and then when Daniel gets healthy, it's a terrific recruiting class. It's so important to get kids in our state because they know what playing in Minnesota is all about. And those three guys really, really care. You need veteran leadership. You've had that with Jordan Murphy. What does he bring to the team? And has he, I'll say in some ways, exceeded some of the expectations that you may have had with him when he came in? Yeah, I just think Murph's done it. You know, I mean, he, he's he's won at a high level in this league. He's been successful. I mean, he's had, uh, you know, the record, tied the record, Tim Duncan's double-double record, led the country in double-doubles. So regardless of the leadership part of it, he's produced in the Big Ten uh, for three years, and I think he's going to have a terrific year. You touched on it a little bit earlier with Eric Curry. Where's his status right now, and how soon do you think he'll be, I'll say, doing basketball activities? You know, at the end of the summer, he, he was doing a little bit of basketball stuff, uh, contact-wise. We ease into it. You know, you do a lot of non-contact stuff, and then you add some contact stuff. 
He's close, um, but we'll be patient. You know, I think mid-September would be my guess, but, you know, I, you don't really know, but we'll be patient with him. He looks really, really good, though. How about Amir? I know that, uh, you know, at the end of the season probably wasn't exactly what he kind of hoped for, and now he's going to get a fresh start this season. Yeah, getting injured and missing a bunch of games is not what you hope for, um, but I think when healthy, Amir is one of the better players in our league. He's versatile. He can pass the ball. He can shoot it. He can defend. Uh, he can score the ball, underrated score. It's just a matter of being healthy. Despite maybe the setback that Daniels had, has he kind of kept his chin up a little bit, knowing the fact that this is not going to be a for long thing and he'll be ready to go? You know what? I mean, it was good we caught it early, had surgery in May, uh, you know, get it over with now, and then we'll have a big fall. I mean, he'll have eight, nine weeks to practice, uh, so that'll be plenty of time for him. Disappointed when you have to have surgery, but it's good that we're going to get him healthy and ready to go. What are some of the things that you're kind of hoping from Brock Stoll as he kind of comes in here and inserts himself into the, the roster? He just got in yesterday, um, so it's hard to say exactly. Patino looking forward to getting to work with Brock Stoll, who should add an element of leadership and certainly shooting. The Gophers can use three-point shooting help. Brock Stoll can help in that regard. Gophers men's basketball with head coach Richard Pitino. A little update there. All right. You know, ever since I started this podcast, people have been asking me for advice. Heck, going back a number of years, whether I was at the Fan, Channel 4 for a stretch, helping out their morning show, Channel 9, covering the Vikings in 2009 for CBSSports.com, or now being back at Channel 5 since 2010. People like to pick my brain from time to time. Usually it's about who to bet on this week. The truth is, I don't really know. I mean, I've got opinions. But do my opinions matter all that much? But you know what? If you want to make a bet, you should check out my bookie. Forget picking my brain. There are other places to pick the brains of really smart, talented people that study this. And then you can go to my bookie and make some bets. Remember, who you're betting on is just as important as who you are betting with. That's why I always tell people, try my bookie. Trust my guys. They are the best bet this season. They've been in business for years. They have great reviews online. Their mobile site is easy to use. I would only recommend a really good site to listeners of this podcast. It is my bookie online, mybookie.com. That's why you should go to my bookie because they will pay you. They will pay you in a timely fashion if you win. You have to win, of course, but my bookie is the place to make bets. They have live betting. They have the in-game betting. So they have all sorts of options for you. Join now, and my bookie will match your deposit dollar for dollar if you use the promo code SCOOP. Visit my bookie online today. That's my bookie, B O O K I E. And don't forget to use the promo code SCOOP when creating your account to claim the bonus. You play, you win, you get paid. It is my bookie. Dot com. Congratulations to the Gophers volleyball team. They ascended to the number one ranking in the country on Monday. Of course, the Final Four is at Target Center in December. Congratulations to Hugh McCutcheon's team. Gophers men's hockey will have their first meeting of the season tomorrow, Tuesday, September 4th. Last week, I caught up with Gophers men's hockey coach in his first year, former assistant, former head coach at St. Cloud State, Bob Motzko. Coach, being here, is it almost like the unofficial start of the season? You got guys back on campus. Next thing you know, practice will start. <laughs> it, it is officially beginning for us. There's no question. Kids are moving in uh, all this week. They'll, they'll come in. A lot of the freshmen are moving in the dorms today. Uh, and then we want to give them a week off to, you know, get settled, get all acclimated with everything they've got to do. Then we get started pretty quick. How about you individually? Have things slowed down for you, or is it still a whirlwind? I, I, I'm not going to say slow down, but uh, uh, the fact that we got moved, you know, we're, we're, we're getting comfortable right now. Still, I unpacked, we unpacked the garage yesterday. We're all done with that and, and still doing things like that around the house. But, you know, it's a lot, lot easier commute into work and, and starting to feel much more settled and, and getting much more comfortable. And, you know, when it comes to, you know, getting to know your players and, heck, you still need to hire an assistant coach, right, just in terms of the job duties are you getting more comfortable yeah i, I mean there's no question that uh, hockey's hockey and i can't wait to get 
started on the ice. That's going to be the familiar side of it. And I don't know the players. And, and we had very limited uh, opportunities to be around them in the summer. Um, you know, you'd say hello if you'd see them down in the locker room. And, and they were coming and going in their, with their business in the summer. But I'm anxious to get to know the players. And, and especially we got a large senior class, the leadership. There seems to be a great pulse with the guys right now. Um, and really we'll kick it off next Tuesday with our first meeting. And it'll all start then. It's found on that senior class, I mean, led by Tyler Sheehy. How nice is it to have those sorts of guys back? Well, there, there's, there's a, there's a large group, and they've had a lot of success. They've had a lot of individual success, and they've had team success. You know, you know, talk about Sheehy. He, he had 50 some points two years ago, and then you know you can't win off a, an injury and, and a little bit slowed last year, but he's healthy, he's 100. percent And a guy like that, you know, just know you've got him and Tommy Novak back, and and good goaltending back. There's a core of guys that that this team. Uh, I, I, I keep saying the word, we're going to surprise people. But, but I don't know really if it's a surprise. This is Minnesota, you know, go for hockey. And, and this this team has a chance to be pretty good. Maybe after this, how's recruiting going? I mean, seemingly, every time I check Twitter, there's some kid committing to you, some kid flipping. It seems like from afar, recruiting is going very well. Well, it, it is going very well. And, you know, obviously we can't make comments uh, on on individual recruits. But it's going very well. But it should go well in this program. And, and uh we're kind of in a holding pattern right now and, and just dealing with a couple of things because we're all excited to get the season going. And that's just not our season, but, uh, you know, the Elite League will get going here in a little bit. The USHL starts having their camps and really and get to know our team, and then we can we can dig into the whole thing. Gophers men's hockey coach Bob Motzko will wrap up Scoop Podcast episode 171. I should note, Ryan Suter of the Wild expected to join on Scoop Podcast episode 172 at some point later this week. We'll wrap up Scoop Podcast episode 171 with conversations with Gophers women's basketball assistant coaches Kelly Roisland and Carly Tebow Dudanis. We'll go with Kelly first right into Carly. Kelly, is the state fair sort of a sign of, hey, the summer's over, the girls are back on campus, and the season is right around the corner? You know what it is. I mean, it's uh, it's awesome to be here and, and to kind of get out and enjoy the last bit of summer. And uh, it's a really a gear up for, uh, for the fall uh, semester and uh, a great uh, time to be on campus at Minnesota. Minnesota. When fans stop you, I mean, I saw a gentleman stop you when we walked over. What what comes up when they stop you? I think the biggest thing is just how excited they are for the season to begin. How excited they are for uh, you know the to watch games um, and obviously be a part of what Coach Whalen's going to do at Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think about it. I mean, you think about all the season ticket sales and just the buzz. I mean, put that into words. Just can you quantify just the excitement level with Coach Whalen now joining? I mean, it's huge. I mean, clearly she has such an impact on the state of Minnesota. She made such an impact on fans and people that followed the program. And um, I think, you know, with the amount of season tickets that we've sold and e- even for our home opener, um, people that are already, you know, buying tickets to come out, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and I know we're hoping to, to have a, a really great start to the season. How about selfishly? I mean, you now being back on campus, what does it mean for you? You know, I feel very lucky to be working with Lindsay, to be back on campus in a place that I care a lot about, in a place that's very familiar to me. And um, it'll be an awesome kind of reunion with a lot of our staff members, Lindsay and I, and obviously Coach Danny. Um, And uh, it's a place that we want to see be very successful, and I think... uh, I think that we can do it with, with, the, with the players and obviously the staff that, that she's put together. Your time was somewhat limited, but you got some on the court time with the girls over the summer. That on the court time, what stood out to you? You know, I think the biggest thing is we we return a lot of great players, a lot of great scores. Um, you know, we have some pieces to fill with, you know, the loss of some post players and Carly Wagner, but just their work ethic, their ability to, obviously they know how to win, um, and they want to continue that, that tradition of winning at Minnesota, and, you know, it, it'll be fun to, to see how we stack up in the, in, in the Big Ten this year. I mean, do you have a sense? I mean, you got to play some games over in Italy. Do you have a sense of how you might stack up? You know, we actually we had one tough game over in Italy, um, which was nice to see against a quality club and just how they respond to adversity and obviously playing in a tight game. But I, you know, they a lot of them have the have the experience. I think that and they know how to win in the Big Ten, and so so we'll see what shakes out. I mean, we're going to be implementing you know a different system um, offensively and especially defensively, and they've picked up on that really quick. You know, I think that they want to work hard. They're invested in what Lindsay's bringing to the table and that's really fun to see how about just overall how beneficial was 
that trip to Italy? It was huge. Um, you know, it allowed us to, to practice with the team. We had 10 practices leading up to the trip, and it, it gave our staff a better idea of what we can see against other opponents and um, just really who stepped up and um, who's going to be ready to go when we start, um, start here soon. Is Kanisha Bell the leader of your team? She is. I mean, she is. She has valuable experience that you can't replace. Um, but then we have some other women that have really taken on a role in terms of leadership um, on the court and even off the court. Um, so we're looking looking forward to seeing who will even take a bigger step in the leadership department here as we as we rev up the season. How about some names on that front? So Annalise, Annalise Lemke, we call her AL. Um, Destiny Pitts, she's a returning uh, Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Um, and then uh, Jasmine, our point guard, Jasmine Brunson. Um, a couple women that really stood out uh, in terms of their leadership this summer. Leave after this, how nice is it now having Lindsay on board full time? I know she's not here at the fair, but the fact that now her, her playing career is done and she's all in on, on you know coaching and, and being with you guys on an everyday basis. You know, it'll be great to have her in the office every day. She you know she was she did an amazing job kind of with her dual roles, um, but I think now that she can really shift her focus um, over to Minnesota is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, you know she knows it's a it's a big challenge, but um, she's she's won in everything that she's done, and, and I know she wants to do that here with the Gophers. Carly, first time at the fair. Just tell us about your first time experience here at the Minnesota State Fair. It's been awesome. Um, I'm really excited to go get some lunch here in a few minutes um, and my famous deep fried Oreos. Um, but the people are great. Our, our turnout was great to come watch, you know, the, our staff talk and, and you know, some other uh, staffs of other teams as well. So the, the Minnesota love is real. How much, I mean, you look back, I mean, you've been here, what now, about four-ish months? I mean, is it still a whirlwind? Are things starting to slow down on your front? Uh, yes, things are, have kind of settled in a little bit. Um, obviously, having Lindsay back here in about a week will be helpful. But um, from a recruiting standpoint, we've kind of gotten a lay of the land and, you know, targeted some, some of our top recruits and priorities. So... Um, we've kind of gotten a routine and, and what works for us and as a staff, and uh, it's a great start. How much pride do you take in recruiting? A lot. Um, it's kind of been uh, my niche right here for a little while, and, and one of the things that Lindsay hired me to come help and, and do. We've um, got a lot of work to do as far as keeping talent home in Minnesota. We, you know, there's, there's a lot of really, really good talent in the next couple of classes, and we want to keep them home. And we've gotten a great start in our, in our next class, our 2019 class, and now we've got to kind of keep it rolling. What was it like the month of July? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is the busiest recruiting month. Clearly, Lindsay's tied up, so, I mean, it was all about you and your assistants. But, but clearly, I mean, you're leading that charge. What was that month like navigating, clearly keeping Lindsay in the loop on things, but you leading the way? Um, well, Lindsay's done a great job. Um, she's really been intentional about who she wants to recruit and, you know, intentional about the Minnesota talent. And um, she was able to go out just one or two days um, in, 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 uh, in Minnesota in July. Um, so that was helpful. She was able to at least get her eyes on a couple of our a couple of our kids but um you know for us our, our main goal for the summer was to make sure that we kept our kept our talent home and um and then target some other ones that we want to pull from you know maybe surrounding states or international and um and i think we we accomplished that goal and now we just gotta get some yeses <laughs> how did italy treat you uh, I think I gained a few pounds of pasta and gelato, um, but it was great. Uh, our girls were really fun to be around and get to know a little bit more and spend a lot of time with, and they were really grateful for the experience, as, as all of us were, um, and, and it's always helpful to come home with three wins. I mean, I would think ten practices, yeah, three games, the team bonding off the court. Yeah. I mean, these foreign trips, I mean, they have to just be a big-time win. Yeah, yep, it was a blessing. Um, you know, I w obviously we wished that Lindsay could have been with us throughout the, the trip, but she was able to be at most of the practices and um, just getting to know our girls and, and develop a relationship with them and develop some trust and, and all of that. It's been, it's been a blessing. And you guys are implementing, I mean, it's a new offensive system, new defensive system, so there's a lot of work to be done. Yes, lots of work, and our girls have embraced that and know it's going to be a process, and it, it's going to be a process. It's going to be a process throughout the whole year. Um, but they've embraced that, and they, they're not afraid of the work. I'll leave you with this. Okay, the links are done. So, like, you're all in on Washington now, right? Like, you don't have to worry about, oh, do I root for the links? Do I root for Washington? You're all about rooting for your dad. Oh, yeah, go Mystics. Go Mystics. Hopefully they'll make it to the finals, and we may try to sneak out to a game there or in Seattle, Phoenix, depending on who wins. And, um, yeah, if you, if you don't have a team to root for, root for the Mystics. Did you watch, I mean, presumably, did you watch game one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, I actually, my husband suggested that we didn't have anybody at the house to come watch because I probably, you know, should make sure that I don't act a fool in front of uh, other people. But uh, we got the win, and uh, game two is tomorrow, and, and then they go back to Washington. So hopefully they can steal game two in Atlanta and get it done at home. 
suppose it helps your dad to have a leader like Della Don, right? I mean, she's about as good as it gets. Yeah, I mean, she makes it look makes it look easy. I don't. I honestly, I'm not sure. I'd love to know the stat. I don't think she misses an open shot ever, like all year. So no, it's helpful to have that. And between her and Christy Tolliver, they've kind of taken the reins, and they've got really good team chemistry offensively and defensively. So they've got. They feel like they have a good chance. Maybe with this, you're at Mississippi State. I mean, that program is on top of the world right now. I mean, was it easy to come work for Lindsay, somebody you've known forever, you've got family here in Minnesota, or was it agonizing? Uh, I mean, it was something that, that my husband and I prayed about a lot. We had a lot of peace about doing it and just a lot of peace about Lindsay's values and her purpose for coaching and, and why she is doing what she's doing and wanted to be a help, uh, help part, build something special and uh, build it from the ground up and um, you know I couldn't ask to do a better people. That the voice of Gophers women's basketball assistant coach Carly Thibault Dudanis talked to her and Kelly early last week at the state fair so Lindsay Whalen is all in now this week she used last week to recharge her battery she is full steam ahead as of the day after Labor Day Tuesday September 4th on coaching Gophers women's basketball. And I talked to Carly after game one of the Washington Atlanta series. Her dad, Mike, is the head coach of the Washington Mystics. That series has now reached five games. And Phoenix and Seattle has also reached five games. So really good times in the WNBA playoffs, even though the Minnesota Lynx are done. A reminder, Ryan Suter of the Wild expected to join on Scoop Podcast episode 172. Be sure to support the sponsors of the Scoop Podcast right now, MyBookie, MyBookie.com, Skoll Marketing, SkollMarketing.com, and Vivid Seats for your Vikings ticket needs. It is VividSeats.com. So MyBookie, Vivid Seats, and Skoll Marketing, helping keep the Scoop Podcast going. Always appreciate you listening. Have a great week, everybody. This is Stephanie March, food editor of Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine and fellow foodies. It's the most wonderful time of the year, the Minnesota State Fair. And not only are foods on a stick, I'm bringing you a podcast on a stick. It's a show released daily during the run of the fair, covering the fair's best of the best, the must-eats, the new foods, the old favorites, plus events, hidden gems, and the shows you can't miss. We're going to cover it all. Just listen to Podcasts on a Stick. Find episodes on the Podcast One app or wherever you find your podcasts. New tweets. I'm Ed Donahue with an AP update. On Twitter, President Trump says Jeff Sessions' Department of Justice put Republicans in jeopardy ahead of the midterms with recent indictments of two GOP congressmen. The president wrote, two easy wins now in doubt because there is not enough time, adding, good job, Jeff. Tropical Storm Gordon has moved past the Miami area and he is moving toward in the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical Storm Force winds uh, could be spreading across the, this the, the warning area uh, late tomorrow, and so today's your, the, the full day to prepare. And forecasters say there are high surf warnings up in the Pensacola area in the Gulf Coast. Police in San Bernardino, California, say eight people were shot and wounded at an apartment complex during a dice game overnight. A 17-year-old and one adult were critically wounded. Police in San Bernardino say the victims are not cooperating with investigators in the case. I'm Ed Donahue.